Hello everyone and welcome back to City Skylines. We are moving away from the first town of Pine Creek and we are going to work on a new industrial area. Now we are going to need a lot of power for the region so this is going to be maybe our only um, or maybe our first kind of power plant here and it's going to be a, a, a decent size uh, if you compare it to the other industrial areas that we've made before it's about twice as big and also we're going to have about twice as many rail yards so you can see we are kind of doubling down on how many rails are going through the area um, move it tool is really great for getting your kind of roads and rails to line up in certain ways um, so obviously the default wants to kind of wrap around the rail itself and that just doesn't look good so if you let it do that you can simply drag the nodes back onto the other side and make it look like it's doing a nice smooth transition as it should and you can get these nice kind of sweeping um, combining sections of track and that's how I kind of design my rail yards uh, I'm sure it's probably not 100% realistic but again you know I'm not really well versed in these things so I go for more of a um, I don't know, somewhat realistic or that's good enough kind of mentality. And it is going to look uh, pretty good here. So, you know, there, there are other little tricks. So if you have areas where they're not quite uh, connecting quite smoothly, you, you're, you're mainly just wanting to keep that one track uh, line in that center point. And then you're able to delete uh, the track in between the straight section and the and the last bit of the turn and you can kind of relay that down and you can smooth it out to your leisure so moving on from the rail yard up to the um i guess that's technically the right side of the factory we are going to be putting down our two main power plants. Um, they are both coal power plants, which makes sense because the trains that I have downloaded currently are really only coal trains. Uh, we might look into downloading some more custom train assets a little bit later. And, um, you know, I'm also from West Virginia, so coal is kind of big over there. So it kind of made sense to uh, have a coal plant for me. We are uh, going to add some cooling towers. We're also going to add some basins for, you know, water storage possible um, or just areas where they can hopefully clean the water as much as possible. You never know what uh, regulations there might be here in our region here. If you kind of combine other industrial structures um, using Ryko, you can also definitely make this a more usable space for your local cities, towns, and uh, citizens that live in the area. And you can also kind of get additional traffic and use them as little outbuildings, you know, out storage sheds and uh, possible other refining type of structures that are just kind of uh, going hand in hand with the base kind of large uh, turbine buildings. So we have our substation off to the initial kind of side here. Uh, we will eventually run these power cables pretty much across the landscape. Um, if you take a look at Google Maps, you can really see swaths of just cut down trees where they run these uh, um, high voltage cables across the US. So I thought uh, that's something we'll have to probably try and capture a little bit later. Filling in a whole bunch of concrete, though we end up do, you know, leaving some grass space left just so that uh, we can get some either ruined concrete spots or start blending the concrete out a little bit because they're not going to you know, just pour a giant slab of concrete. One, it's a little bit of expensive. So if you just have kind of low shrubs that can kind of take care of themselves for the most part, it's a little bit more of a better business decision, in my opinion. Uh, we are also going to try this. Um, this kind of was a failed experiment on my part. Um, my, my reference images for, you know, power plants are, you know, rather, I guess, uh, I don't have that many. So I did notice that the few that I did have you know, they had these sections of, um, you know, waterways kind of interacting with the plant. Uh, I'm sure they were probably taking water from the river itself, so they wouldn't have to ship any water in. And so they were essentially just probably capturing a bit of the river and then piping that directly into the building and to, to fill up and so they can heat that water up to turn those turbines. But I just couldn't get this to work. I'm not great at these whole riverside details, especially trying to get these piers and uh, things like that built. So if you guys have any tips on uh, getting, you know, something like that 
constructed, do let me know. Or if someone's made one before, point me to it and I can maybe try and uh, use their design as much as possible. We are also going to have some extra area over here to the north. Or is it south now? I, don't, I never know which way is north. I need to make a compass row somewhere on this map. We are going to have a bunch of piles for, you know, just raw resources here being sorted and, um, you know, stored openly. And, you know, this is coal, uh, the general fuel from the plant itself. And it's going to have a nice solid concrete wall going around it. This is kind of their main asset. So, you know, you want to make sure that is uh, pretty secure in the area. We also want to make sure the parking spots just to the south are functional. And they are. Um, all of the parking spots that I try and place in City Skylines is... Um, you know, trying to make sure they get used in some sort of way. Even the ones here along the side of the building, they are functional parking lots. We're gonna have a little bit of an out, uh, kind of fenced area here, which will hold some vehicles a little bit later on, you know, just like a small fleet of vehicles. And here along the train tracks, we're gonna have some storage containers. So we're just copying, you know, some of the decals around. It's, it's a big area of concrete, and you really wanna try and use some decals to break it up a little bit. Um, some more additional towers and in fact that yellow raised piping We're gonna try and do something a little bit different with that compared to say everything else so far um, That I've tried and because it's raised up and it has those columns on it I kind of use it as a raised pipeline going across a lot of the facility I don't know if that made it into the footage or not But it is uh, a pretty cool effect and I hope you guys like it kind of using it like that and here, you know, trying to get some different mixed variety of cargo containers that we have installed here in the safe. Uh, obviously, we're going to need some of these uh, vehicles to move them around. And so this is what that fenced in area was for. And also some forklifts, you know, just kind of parked in there. And, you know, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's a lot of vehicles for, for you know, the, the size of the plant or, or something like that. But I really noticed that the a lot of factories or or in general a lot of in heavy industrial areas will have um these areas of just mass kind of parking lots for all their fleet of vehicles and they do keep them like that and here is by the way that raised pipe that i think uh looks pretty cool going across a lot of these facilities they kind of carry the you know any any of these type of assets across to the different kind of refining areas or water storage areas and this is how the piping is kind of visible from above and it kind of also you know just breaks up and, and adds some additional layers of detail that we might not have otherwise going across the the pretty gray looking concrete in that that bit of yellow kind of makes it look pretty cool. It could also technically look like raised conveyor belts, um, which is something that I want to try and find a mod for so that we can have these facilities, you know, be all connected and, and look like they're actually functioning together. I think that would be pretty cool in the long run. Here are some more cargo containers. We have some additional industrial cranes along the rail tracks just to make sure they look a little bit more usable in the long run. So we have some yellow ones kind of giving this lower support structure, the red ones kind of up above it, and they are kind of the bright uh, from afar they kind of look like the main crane itself so i think that looks pretty cool gonna fence in the whole area you know this is gonna have to be secure uh, the rail yard is gonna have a double fence because it needs a chain link fence by the train tracks itself and then it needs a actual fence around the uh, the power plant you know you don't want really anyone coming into this area so that's why they are using that high fence going around and even some areas have barbed wire Really, in reality, probably all of it should have barbed wire, but hey, it's one of those things. And uh, opening up the gate, so you know we have some access points into the large kind of storage area for raw materials. And then we get into the heavy decal section of the video. And you know, going through with these yellow lines is um, something that I think is super important for these areas of just pure gray concrete and that's to give you curbs some some additional details just along the building foundations so that they look like they're interacting with the road a little bit better and you can just go around 
trace areas where cars really shouldn't be kind of interacting with. Uh, you know, any any like loading zone or unloading zone or just areas where these pipes are running across, you know, no cars should really be parked up near those. So you want to keep that area clear. And, um, you know, you can get this really cool, clean effect going around the whole road. And, you know, because the road that we used is just that kind of alleyway, it's not you know, there's no road markings by default. So this is kind of the road markings that the cars look like they follow and just kind of makes the whole area come together a little bit better. Over here at the edge, we have a little bit of a police station kind of set up just so that we can have, um, you know, some security checkpoint right at the entrance. And the roadway is connected. I kind of skipped that whole section in the video. It took me a long time trying to figure out how with the roads to interact with this area. But you can see we do get traffic down here, which is great. A whole lot of trucks coming through this section. In fact, I think this is before I added the, um, its own kind of cargo train depot. And so the previous town was getting so overloaded with trains that traffic became such a huge trouble. Uh, I even tweeted out a picture of just gridlock traffic over in the old industrial area that they, they couldn't leave. It was just that many vehicles trying to get supplies down to this lower section because that was the, the quickest route. Um, that the train could really get supplies down here. So, you know, adding an additional kind of cargo train depot down here really helped. And you can see it now on the other side of the railroad track. And it's just a little mod asset. And, you know, I didn't want to have uh, the same one that we used up in the previous town. That was the default asset. And plus the default asset didn't really line up with the track spacing that we had planned. And this one actually did. So, um, you know, that I think that was a big win in terms of, uh, you know, finding a good workable mod for us. So more yellow lines, a whole lot of decals, you know, marking out loading only, uh, loading zones, you know, have some more vehicles spread around a little bit over here. Just, just really want to start cluttering up a lot of these corners and uh, sections to make it look uh, really lived in and, and worked in area though you can go a little overboard but i'd rather go a little overboard and try and trim things down rather than necessarily um getting it right from the get-go because it's just easier for me to remove things and after kind of placing a whole lot of them i feel like the balance is a little bit easier to achieve here is the initial kind of crossing right there just to get off the uh, state route just and it takes you along the riverside. And I do like the way the road turns out. It has no details over there just yet. So that's something I'm gonna have to do probably off camera or um, during a detailing episode. Um, there are some areas, you know, with crates and boxes, just general storage areas. And the way these industrial buildings kind of just attach onto the side of the power plant is really cool. It makes it look like this is kind of the more administration kind of side of things or the more kind of it interacts with the vehicle section and so that kind of works out for us the line tool is becoming my best friend over time um, it's something that I'm slowly getting better and better at using so I suggest everyone uh, practice with any mods if, if you guys are playing with mods uh, like I am um, you might not get it right off but if you keep using it you're definitely going to get a whole whole lot better so you know we have some grass area here just by the substation where all these power lines are going across and we'll end up probably putting some low-lying grass and bushes in there because that's kind of a a, a section that they want to try and manage the I, I guess the height of uh, the woodland type elements in that area we are also going to be here in a second, I think switching over to placing down the greenery, at least uh, the first pass of greenery in the section after we kind of add all this dirt in. Um, basically how I'm doing this is I have this kind of dirt grass decal. And if you just hold right click and kind of go back and forth, almost like you're working a sponge, to be honest, like a sponge painting on a wall. Um, you can, you can get some some nice you know interesting non-repeating patterns and so that's what i'm doing there here all the decals in the area of the storage facility 
Um, we also need some tire decals along the areas where a lot of vehicles are kind of moving back and forth. And you know, these are the things that just kind of sell the area, really make it look uh, like a working zone in general. So, you know, it's kind of a, a nice thing to have. We are now moving on to the, you know, loose kind of greenery that we are going to be placing down this episode. Um, this is how I imagine greenery in my head. And, and essentially my strategy is um, I have bundles of, of these low-lying plants kind of just along the fence edge. And then as we kind of space them out and get kind of this random assortment of things, you can then increase uh, the size of them so you can go from grasses to small bushes in in clumps here just kind of reinforcing this and then from those you can get taller trees behind them and then this this is how kind of um, these forests in these green spaces kind of end and transition in a, in a very natural looking way so you can get a a pretty cool looking greenery space without really too much effort if you think about it it's very methodical and um, it, it just kind of works, at least for me. You guys are you know, free to do whatever you wish in this kind of um, area, but uh, I, I enjoy having the low-lying stuff kind of transition upwards. And then as it gets higher and higher, I don't really necessarily have to put grass under those trees because it's areas that you're not really even gonna see. So at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at real time and you guys uh, get to see how it all looks. All right, so here we are taking a look at our coal-fired power plant for the region, and everything I think turned out pretty well. Um, it's, it just looks pretty vast and uh, overall impressive, especially with the mountains in the background and things, and trains pulling up here, unloading their cargo, and instantly just spawning some vehicles and trucks to take things to their uh, designated buildings. So what we got here, over to the left side of the facility. This is kind of like the, the store, main storage area of the plant and also the main substation. Now, substations, you know, for a plant of this size, this probably needs to be a lot bigger. But um, I, I think if I made it much bigger, it would almost look weird as a composition. So I decided to just keep it small like it is now. Um, we also have, uh, you know, some refining plant type of structures here going across. We have additional refinement areas over in this section as well, just kind of as an afterthought. I just wanted something a little bit uh, more sparse along this edge here. So um, I think these tall towers also help try and balance out the substation. So it kind of gets a nice kind of U shape going across the middle. All these parking lots are functional. I need to go through and set rules for a lot of these roads still, like no parking along, along the side on a lot of them. I think that would help out a lot. Um, all these yellow painted lines everywhere gives some nice kind of dynamic footprints to some of these structures, especially through here and uh, through this area. You know, any anytime you get these little juts going on, I think it looks pretty neat. Like, and even say, like, where is it? I think I have an area. Yeah, like this. This being kind of sectioned off with with paint uh, along here. We can probably put some loading sign logos and things like that. Um, but I didn't want to go too too crazy with all the decals. I wanted to, to try and put grass and greenery in some of these areas here. Um, but it's so polluted that a lot of the grasses and greenery are kind of invisible. So I'm going to have to try and see if I can't change that. You can kind of see the effects of pollution affecting these areas here. So that's uh, what I had to kind of watch out for going forward. We have some grass interacting and growing in between the rail lines, which looks pretty great in my opinion. Now technically this two sections of rail were supposed to be the unloading loading section. Um, but the train actually stops here on this outer kind of bypassing rail. This is actually what I made this rail for. In fact, that's why I also even made this kind of connecting rail going across all lanes. Um, in case there was a small train up here kind of being worked on still. So, you know, it, it's, it's, um, isn't that quite a hundred percent successful? I think it turned out okay, but, um, probably would have laid this down first if I was redoing it. 
Um, I didn't think I would need a uh, cargo train station down here, but uh, without it, the other one just becomes way too busy and gridlocked, and it still does from time to time. Um, we are going to eventually take all these power lines directly over to the town and uh, get rid of the wind turbines over there just because they were temporary and um, all following these power lines we're gonna have these kind of low bushes and low grass type of structures um, and from a distance you're gonna see a nice kind of cut path going across the landscape where these things are and it will look pretty cool I hope at least in general um, we are producing a bunch of power. Uh, I think I'm producing about 500 megawatts, which um, I think currently we only have 47 megawatts in demand. So we are producing quite a lot. And this should, in theory, power probably the city um, when we get there. Or at least all the rural er areas that we're going to have uh, leading up to the main city itself. So over here, this is the road connecting outwards and also how the train gets down into this lower section. We did have to make a bridge. Now, I know I could have probably had the train tracks just interact with the road itself, but um, I like the bridge. I think it kind of breaks up the entry point a little bit in, in, in a nice way, and also it helps traffic uh, not interact or bother each other and uh, keeps this kind of from being a bottleneck kind of section. We have uh, this nice kind of mountainside train route going along up here and uh, the exit and entry point for the power plant is just right up along the main interstate. Now I am thinking about adding some additional roads, small country roads along here and uh, possibly get some homes up along this ridge and uh, up in this area because we do need a, a lot more kind of residential. Our town over here is not enough. So if I can get some country kind of homes up in the mountains, I think that'll look pretty cool. Just kind of little spots and areas uh, to help the whole area kind of get tied together a little bit better. Um, other than that, everything's looking pretty good. So if you zoom out, you can see kind of what we're going for. Um, we're going to have some more residential and commercial areas up along uh, this edge here. Not a crazy amount. It's not going to be like a proper town. It's going to be more like... Um, a subsection uh, kind of transitioning from this town to our next town which I think is gonna be all the way over here this is gonna be a little bit of a bigger um, town for sure along the river and we're gonna you know span across and we can get even some more country type of structures going along this side and uh, back here probably as well and this train route is just gonna we wiggle its way along the river and follow that the uh, route the state route kind of just follow the upper section as much as possible and um yeah we're, we're slowly working our way down the river if you guys are enjoying city skylines do leave a like um you know that's how i gauge how well a series is going and how much you guys enjoy me making these things go ahead and also leave a comment on what you think I should be building next and also what you think of our cool little power plant so far. I'm sure I didn't do a lot of things right, so your feedback is probably pretty necessary going forward. And also, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. So until then, bye.